Hola, Dolores Huerta. Buenas tardes. Uh, espero que estén bien disfrutando el viernes. Sobrevivimos una semana en la casa y espero que hayan buscado tiempo para ir afuera y jugar un poco. Um, this is a funny book. I saw another teacher from Monroe Elementary put a, a video out about how to be creative because some of his students were saying that they were bored. So I thought this might be a good book to read because sometimes when you're bored, the best ideas happen. And these are some inventions. It's called Imaginative Inventions. I think I have to fix the lights one second. Is that better? I think that's better. Imaginative Inventions by Cherise Harper. The who, the what, the where, the when, the why of roller skates, potato chips, marbles, and pie, and more. So these are just some inventions. It says, for papa, French for dad, who whistles while he makes things. How are inventions made? Is it really hard to do? To think of something people need that's different and brand new. This is the story of the invention of potato chips. Who remembers who invented the potato chip? I know you second graders, you know the answer to this one. Potato chips. In Saratoga Springs in 1853, the first chip was invented very accidentally. Now the cook, whose name was George, had never been to France. He said, I'd love to travel, but I've never had the chance. One day there was a customer, let's say his name was Rick. He ordered some of George's fries, then said, these are too thick. Now Rick had been to France. He said, French fries should be thinner. I'll just wait until you fix these, then I'll finish up my dinner. France, France, fancy pants. Chef George was not impressed. He cut Rick's fries up super thin for being such a pest. Well, Rick said, my friend George, I like these more than fries. They're crispy and they're crunchy. You deserve a cooking prize. It's the story of George Crumb. Here on the side, I don't think you can see. There's some information. It says, George Crumb, Saratoga Springs, New York, 1853. People in the U.S. eat more potato chips than people in any other country. I believe it. Most popular flavors, U.S. barbecue, Canada, ketchup, vinegar, Greece, oregano. Americans eat the most chips on Super Bowl Sunday, 11.3 million pounds. The ridged chip was invented in 1983. It is the king of dipping chips. Frisbee. In 1957, flying saucers were his passion. Walter dreamed of men from space and what they'd wear as fashion. He made a little disc of tin and threw it in the air, and from far away it looked as if a UFO was there. He thought it was the first to think of such a game. He thought he was the first to think of such a game, but others had invented it and given it a name. Students at a school called Yale would eat a Frisbee pie. Then they'd throw the empty tin high across the campus sky. Walter heard of the Frisbee tins and said, that name is great. So he called his toy a Frisbee, then ate pie to celebrate. Walter Frederick Morrison in California around 1957. The longest distance a flying Frisbee disc has been thrown is 693.3 feet. More Frisbees are sold every year than footballs, baseballs, and basketballs combined. There is a special Frisbee made just for dog competitions so they can catch it in their mouths. Pie. In Greece, there was a baker 1,600 years ago who said, I'll make a stew and then cover it with dough. It said the world's first pie was probably made of meat, and it wasn't until later that a pie became a sweet. It says, pig, chicken, goat. Today we have so many kinds like pumpkin, lime, or cherry. Your favorite flavor, is it peach or rhubarb with strawberry? 
So we don't know who it is. It's unknown. In Greece, in the 5th century, apple is the most popular flavor in North America, except at Thanksgiving when the most popular flavor is, you guessed it, pumpkin. The state of Illinois produces the most pumpkins for pumpkin pie. The largest pecan pie ever made was over 40 feet in diameter. Cream pies are the choice of the pie of choice for throwing. Piggy bank. In the Middle Ages, pots were made from pig. It was an orange clay that wasn't hard to dig. When someone had some money to save or hide away, they kept it in their pig jar for a future rainy day. Some potter probably said, after giving it some thought, what if I take my fine pig clay and make a pig-shaped pot? Well, soon the other potters who formed and shaped the clay were making jars in piggy shapes, just like they do today. Says the facts unknown in England, pig used to make pots in the Middle Ages, the first pig-shaped pot created in the 18th century. If you saved one penny for every day you were alive, you'd have one year old, you would have $3.65. At two, you would have $7.30. At three years old, you would have $10.95. At four, you'd have $14.60. Five years old, you'd have $18.25. Six, $21.90. Seven, $25.55. And eight, you would have $29.20. That's if you don't spend it. The largest piggy bank collection has 4,175 pigs in it. Hmm. That's a lot of piggy banks. Eyeglasses. Silvano couldn't see that well, although he wasn't blind. He had a lot of trouble finding things not hard to find. He lost his pants, his socks, his shirt. He even lost his dog. He said, I've got to fix my eyes and clear away this fog. One day in the year 1280, while drinking from a glass, he was looking through the bottom when he said, I see at last. So he made two discs Discs of finest glass, he made them thick and round. He held them right up to his eyes, and this is what he found. My pants, my socks, my shirt, he cried. His heart was filled with glee, and there, right by his favorite chair, his dog scratching a flea. He made a fine contraption. It was a brilliant scheme. He used the top of his nose as a glass's balance beam. who thought to be Silvano Armato in Pisa, Italy, in the 1200s, um, 1280s, 70% of all people in the U.S. wear glasses or contact lenses. Arms for glasses to fit over your ears were invented 400 years after glasses. Until then, people tried to balance glasses on their nose or used leather straps to tie them to their head. The first glasses were often much heavier and caused headaches or sore noses, if worn for too long. Thank goodness they figured that out. Did you know who invented the donut? The donut was invented 500 years ago. The first ones didn't have a hole and were just balls of dough. The pilgrims loved the donut and they brought the recipe from Holland to America in boats across the sea. There was a captain of a boat who said, I don't know why donuts can't be bigger. I'll just ask my mom to try. He poked holes in the middle so they'd cook more evenly, and his mom cooked up the donuts, which they both ate happily. That's how bagels are, too, with a hole in the middle. Hanson Gregory was the first to poke a hole in the donut in Rockport, Maine in 1847. The Midwest and West Coast people seem to prefer raised donuts, while East Coast people seem to like cake-style donuts best. The most popular donut with kids is the chocolate frosted. Is that true? Around $2 billion worth of donuts are sold every year in the United States. The flat-bottomed paper bag. The flat-bottomed paper bag long ago was hard to make, and some said not quite worth all the trouble it would take. Workers first would fold the bags, and then they'd add the glue. This made the bags expensive, plus it took too long to do. Margaret was a lady working in the factory. She said, here's an idea that could help this company. 
wouldn't it be faster if machines could make these bags? I bet I could invent one without too many snags. In the year of 1870, her machine was finally done, and today we use her bags for groceries, lunch, and fun. Margaret E. Knight in Massachusetts in 1870. America's supermarkets purchase 25 billion paper bags a year. We hopefully it's less now because people use their own bags. For the Earth Day groceries project, students paint grocery bags with Earth Day themes and return them to the store. The bags are then distributed to shoppers on Earth Day, April 22nd. In 1999, 1,135 schools participated and painted 374,000 472 bags. Did you know Earth Day is not very old, actually? High-heeled shoes. There was a short French king in the 16th century who said, I must be taller. It is just what I want to be. Now his subjects, they were loyal. So they said, what should we do? Said a timid little cobbler, I could build a higher shoe. The king said, these are great. And he marched around the court. He was taller than before and no longer feeling short. But it happened all too fast for poor Louis the short king. By wearing high-heeled shoes, he'd begun a fashion thing. Now everyone in heels, he no longer seemed that tall. So he had some new shoes made that would tower over all. It was then that he got angry and he made a big decree saying, no more high heels on a man unless that man is me. Oh, I didn't know that. So we don't know who invented it in France in the 16th century. Today, there is still a heel style called the Louis heel after the king, but most high-heeled shoes are worn by women. The first shoes ever made were sandals to protect the feet from sh rocks and sharp sticks. Until 1850, there were no left shoes or right shoes. Both shoes were made exactly the same. <laughs> My ballet teacher used to, he was very short, and she used to play... Um, Drosselmeyer and the Nutcracker, and he wore very tall platform shoes to be tall. Wheelbarrow. Back in the year 200 in China, far away, lived a man who carried things most each and every day. Mr. Lang was his name, and his arms were very strong, but he worried that the carrying would stretch them out too long. He carried for the army, he carried for his wife, he was a man who moved things. Transportation was his life. One day, while on a narrow path, he said, that's it, I'm through. There's got to be a better way to do the things I do. He thought all through his dinner. He thought while in his bed. When he woke up, he was smiling because the plan was in his head. He sawed and banged all morning, and by lunchtime, he was done. He'd made a handy wheelbarrow, and it was the world's first one. Chuko Liang in China in the year 200. Wheelbarrows are still widely used in rural China to transport almost everything. Today, contractors building high rises or houses use wheelbarrows the most, and gardeners sometimes too. People also use wheelbarrows in their gardens to transport dirt and flowers from place to place. Chewing gum. There was a famous general who came from Mexico. His name was Santa Ana and he won the Alamo. He moved to Staten Island, 1860 was the year, and he loved to chew a gummy sap that he said had no peer, no equal. One day he met a man who said, gee, that sap is neat. I'll change it into rubber. It will be an easy feat. Even though he tried his best, the inventor had no luck, and he wondered what to do with all the sap left in his truck. He thought of Santa Ana and of how he liked to chew, so he said, there must be others who would like to do it too. His Adams New York gum sold in 1871, and it only cost a penny and was loved by everyone. Thomas Adams in Hoboken, New Jersey in 1871. Bubblegum is pink because it is the only color dye the inventor had when he was making it. The most popular flavors are peppermint, spearmint, and cinnamon. The largest bubble ever blown was 23 inches in diameter. That's almost two feet wide. North American kids spend approximately half a billion dollars a year on gum. Whoa, that's a lot of chewing. Roller skates. 
Joseph lived in Belgium in 1759. He loved to play his violin and practiced all the time. There was to be a party, a fancy fun affair. Joseph said, I'll make an entrance so my friends will know I'm there. Since the party was on land, he knew ice skates wouldn't do. So he took his favorite footwear and put wheels under each shoe. The night of the big party. With wheeled skates on his feet, Joseph glided in while playing, and the crowd said, oh, how sweet. But he hadn't practiced stopping, so he crashed into a wall, and his violin was broken because he'd smashed it in the fall. So this time it ended badly, but he didn't shed a tear. He just said, I'll have to practice and then try again next year. Joseph Merlin in Belgium in 1759. The modern inline skate for rollerblading, four wheels in a row, was invented in 1966. The first roller skating rink opened in 1866 at a resort hotel in Rhode Island. The highest jump ever made while wearing inline skates was eight feet. 11 inches. The fastest backward rollers backward roller skater reached a speed of 46.69 miles an hour. I can skate backwards but not that fast. So we have three couple more. Marbles. You like playing marbles? There is a game that has been played 5000 years or more. It started back in Egypt, rolling stones across the floor. Stones were smooth and shiny and colorful and round, and the children each took turns rolling them across the ground. Children play it still today with round balls made of glass in schoolyards and on sidewalks, but never on the grass. The inventor is unknown in Egypt in 3000 BC. Recently, a marble sold for $15,000. The most common marble is called the cat's eye, a clear marble with a colored four leaf clover inside. Marble sizes range from half an inch to diameter to two and a half inches in diameter. Marbles are sometimes used to move heavy crates by rolling the box over a marble pad. I didn't know that. Vacuum cleaner. Cecil was a man who said, I like things clean, but I don't want to work too hard, so I'll make a machine. He did some strange experiments and tried to suck up dirt from pillows and on furniture until his lips were hurt. <laughs> oh, that must not have felt comfortable. I would not feel good about sucking up the dirt from the floor. <laughs> and then he tried some blowing, but said, no, that seems wrong. I think I need a wind machine that sucks up dirt real strong. 1901 was the year that he built his first machine. It took two men to operate, but really got things clean. Look at how big the vacuum was back then. And now. Cecil Booth, H. Cecil Booth in England in 1901. The first vacuum cleaner was as large as a refrigerator and took two men to operate, one to push it on its wheel and one to operate its hose. Before 1940, most vacuums were sold door to door. A salesman would knock on your door and ask if you would like a demonstration. And then he would come in and drop dirt on your carpet so you could see how well his vacuum could pick it up. It is satisfying to pick up a lot of dirt. It makes all that noise. Animal cookies. It happened back in England over 100 years ago. A cook said, let's make animals with all this cookie dough. Then someone in America said, that's a great idea. We'll do it too with a bigger zoo and sell those cookies here. They made 18 new animals and put them in a box, a bear, a seal, and monkeys too, but not a pig or fox. So you can bite a zebra's ear or chew on a giraffe or even nibble elephant toes until they make you laugh. You've seen the little crackers, animal crackers. It's a song. It's unknown who invented them. In England, 1890, Nabisco was a company in 1902 in the U.S. First animal cookies made in the U.S. were made by Nabisco. They were called Barnum's Animals after the famous circus. Other animal cookies include bison, camel, cougar, hippopotamus, hyena, kangaroo, rhinoceros, sheep, tiger, and zebra. 
There's a little song that I learned when I was little about animal crackers. A last word about inventions. Some inventions solve a problem like glasses to help you see. Then there are others just for fun like skates or the frisbee. Inventions can be lucky like the great potato chip or even come from other lands like donuts on a ship. Inventors can be young or as old as 93. They just need imagination to see things creativ creatively. Alphabet blocks for the blind, invented 1966 by an 11 year old girl, Crystal. That's pretty cool. Well, I hope you invent something really neat at your house and you tell me about it. Have a great evening. I'll see you on Monday at 5.